Well, evening everybody. How's it going? You join me on the first day of my journey. I'm on the bike. I'm off to ultimately Norway. But at the minute, I'm not far off the ferry port. Uh, Harwich on the east coast near Felixstowe. So nine days trip this one. Really excited about doing this trip. I've planned it and booked it. Uh, really mega chuffed to be doing this I really am so thanks to Yvonne and uh, uh, yeah mega chuffed to be out and about and, and back on the bike again but nine day trip it's going to be uh, up through the Netherlands uh, Germany Denmark and then ultimately then Norway so I hope you join me for the ride so if you watched my last video you'll know then what I'm doing because um, I mentioned everything uh, about, about the trip and slight preparation. What I didn't really show you is what I actually bring. So let's have a quick look while I'm having a rest and just resting the nethers. And uh, I'll show you a bit of kit that I bring. So it might be useful if you're, on, if you're doing a future journey. So if anybody's uh, new to my channel, this is the bike um, I'm using. It's an F850 GS Adventure Sport Rally cracking bit kit. And I uh, absolutely love it. I'm getting a minute of 60, 65 miles to the gallon, so really good. I've just filled up, I get 350 miles out of a tank, with a big tank on this. So, on my back is like, shall we say, the important bit paperwork, passports. I've got a drone in there. Only small, it's not heavy. but um electronics if you know what i mean so they're on the back so when i get off the bike and say go in a cafe or something like that the important stuff is, is on my back and taken with me everything else is important but you know what i mean so that's just the way i do it top box uh got a little bit of a cook set in there for stopping off and um i'm currently on a bit of a well i've lost a stony weight so everything I've got to factor in in what's called fitness pal. So just kept what I've got there to, to factor in what I've been. I've noticed that my wife, um, she popped that in before. It's a little, uh, a little gift. So that's a scruffy little bit, isn't it? That's, that's, where's she got that from? But thanks, you all. I appreciate that. It kind of touched me a little bit when the, it's seeing that in the box. Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to be away for, for, for nine days, so... Thank you. Um, UK sticker on the back. Um, so I'm not showing the full red. Um, I just put that England sticker because I had the old GB GB badge on. So top box water, bit of food. Top waterproofs, midge net for Norway, hand sanitizer. Just odds and sods you can just chuck in. This side is my clothes. So that's like a kind of a hold all bag going anywhere or forgetting the ferry in a bit just take it out. Easy. It's clothes and toiletries and uh, power trainers and flip flops type thing. This side obviously I'm filming it so I've got a tripod I need easy access when I'm stopping. Uh, top there, if I get a little bit chilled, just to put on, and some spare gloves. Got a fishing rod because you can go fishing in Norway. That is a Noiko power charger, and underneath I've it's a battery basically, so the battery drops out a little bit. I can just fire it back up again. I don't think it will, but it has done on a couple of occasions. And underneath is like chain lube and um. Uh, a tyre tire pump and tyre punch and repair kit and lubricant and things like that. So yeah, that's it. And then a little tank bag, which I didn't buy off BMW because they're so bloody expensive. But that I manufactured myself for their webbing strap. Um, trip to Hobbycraft. Uh, it's got the nav, got my helmet. Uh, little like a SJ cam, an old action cam I'll use, or I can attach my phone to, to a mount there if 
for filming. Um, the speed limits in Alley, Norway and Denmark, I've never been, but I keep getting told this. But that is a gentle reminder of not to speed, because apparently the, the fine is horrific, apparently. Garmin sat nav, which is great. You've got all the full control on the bike. And that's all. Uh, padlock, just around there, just in case. I feel the need. Um, and that is it, that's my stuff. So, I'll catch you in a bit. I've got another 40 miles to get to, well, I was always calling it Harwick, which is wrong. It's Horridge. But there is a... It's not Horridge, it's, there is a Horridge in Bolton, not far from where I live. But this is Horridge, apparently. So, sorry for the mispronunciations on the last one. So, I'll see you there. So, I finally get here to Horridge, and uh, there's a few other bikes, uh, all German bikes, all German bikers, apart from one guy who uh, lives in Germany, but he's English. So check-ins, it's quarter to eight now, so we've got to check in. So I'm just going to get my paperwork ready, and then uh, if the camera decides to stay on, you'll see me riding on and strapping the bike down. And then I'll show you the cabin that I'm clipping in tonight for the sailing across. It's about six, seven hours, so I'm looking forward to that. But I do get a bit seasick, so hopefully not. See you in a minute. This is the first for me. Now I'll show you the room. So you get, your, get your key card. Little kind of wardrobe area. I'll have to just zoom all the way back. Something about the creaky pants. 
But yeah, uh, Bijou and Compass, I think they say. So, places for putting your gear. And then a little uh, bed. I don't think I'm going to on the top bunk, that's, that's mine. TV. This is from the other view, and let's have a look at the bathroom. Yeah, perfect. Spotless. Looks like a new ship. Quite impressed. Right, time for a beer and something to eat. I am absolutely starving. I'm not eating. I've only had small things to eat, so I need to eat and definitely a beer. really well uh, it's six o'clock just off of some brekkie slight swaying on the boat so no uh, spewing up in the night thank god see you in a bit Six, six thirty. But at least I beat the queue. This will set me up for the day. Again, quite empty yet. No queue. Welkom in ons taste restaurant, waar een keuze aan diverse ontbijtgerechten voor u klaar staat. Alle language Dutch. Koffie, thee, snacks en croissants zijn verkrijgbaar bij de barista bar aan de achterzijde van het schip op deck negen. Yeah, so just enjoy my breakfast. Just a bit of a rundown really on um, why I picked this route. On my previous video, people, a few people said, why didn't you do like just normal Calais or the ferry or something like that, or you know, you know what I mean, like the Euro tunnel. Well, to get where I'm going today, which from the hook, hook of Holland, to ride up through Netherlands and into Germany just before Denmark, I've got a 360 mile ride today. If I'm honest, that's enough in a day. I normally like to do 250 is enough really, but 360 takes a little bit further. So if I'd have gone like kind of like Calais, that way, Dover Calais, it, I'm adding nearly 100 miles or so, something like that, another two hours journey, maybe a bit more. So you, you're into nearly a 500 mile day, didn't want to do that. Yes, this has cost a bit more money to do, but quite an enjoyable experience. I'd recommend it. So the time spent you're crossing over, brilliant. I slept really well last night, had a good breakfast, decent meal, a um, couple of beers, oh, phone alarm. So absolutely no complaints whatsoever, more fresh for the ride ahead. Uh, right, so it, just to let you know, for this single inside cabin, um, outward and return it, it's cost me 361 and I booked it uh, in March so way ahead of time I'm making my trip a little bit easier I'm not camping or tent or anything like that so what I'm doing I've booked ahead use booking.com I've booked a little hotel in uh, Germany which is like a kind of a traveling hotel um, stay the night in there but in Denmark I'm on the coast in like a kind of a, a camping cabin right on the near the beach near a, a lighthouse and but about 15 minute ride from the actual ferry at Hertschels to go over to Christiansand in Norway so all quite nicely planned out 
leaving nothing to chance. My normal trips when I have been in Europe before on the bike have just wing it. But I'm getting a little bit older now um, and it's nice just to kind of think well just relax and enjoy the ride and not have to stress out about finding accommodation at the end of the evening which sometimes you have to do. So anyway uh, I shall catch you in a bit when I am in the Netherlands. Probably do a bit of filming coming off the belt. Off, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going good. Done quite a few hundred kilometres now, and uh, we're not far off from the border into Germany. Just keep going. Well, yeah, roads are clear. Everything's okay. Weather's fantastic. I'm so lucky with the weather at the minute. But yeah, brilliant. Just stopped off for a little bit of a breather. Whatever bike you ride, you always get sore arse a bit, don't you? It's inevitable. And uh, big tip, folks, you've got to keep um, your helmet clean. Couldn't see a bloody thing before, so I stopped off to give it a polish. Get yourself one of these, little muck, muck off. I'm not swearing. Helmet visor goggle cleaner. Absolutely brilliant, really are. <laughs> well, I figure I'm in Germany now and uh, done about 200, 200, 220 miles, something like that. And uh, once you get into Germany, the autobahns, 
this this A1 autobahn is is mega fast. It's unrestricted quite a lot of it, and you have to keep your your eyes on that left-hand mirror. If you go in that that fast lane, you've got to keep your eyes open because some stuff comes up pretty darn quick. And obviously the bike I've got at the minute is not like what I used to have in the past, like the ZZR14, the ZX12, R1, stuff like that. It's uh, yeah, I've got 150 out of it before kilometers per hour I have done some serious speeds not going to say on, on film when I had the Z set up but then again on the so you're talking 150 160 maybe 175 is the fastest I get out the Z 14 on unrestricted autobahn it's a prison sentence back home isn't it but uh the good drivers I mean the, the road next looks brilliant there's a bit of road works in Germany at the minute but Apart from that, it's fantastic, and I could not have wished for better weather. I'm so chuffed about this weather. So a nice little uh, pull-up stop. I've got enough fuel to get into the destination, I think, thereabouts, and the bike's running great. I'm, I'm loving it. It's fantastic. So obviously not that much scenery to take because it's all been motorways and autobahns and stuff. Nothing much in the Netherlands to take. Um, but yeah, going great. So, I'll see you a bit further on. Uh, I think when we get to the uh, to the hotel I'm staying at, which is really nice, and it's, it's got a sauna in it. So, it's got a... My arse is hurting at the minute, I must admit. Every bite I've ever in, you always get a sore arse, don't you? So, and my shoulders are aching a little bit. So that's going to come in very welcoming. And a nice comfy bed tonight. Unrestricted autobahn, so don't hang about. Speed of that, wow! <laughs> so I'm just chewing some nuts, water, and salt. Beam is going great, guns. As you know, I nickname all my vehicles. This one's called Beamer. Obvious reasons, really. Oh, look at that. Element air. <laughs> A little bit frazzled now. We've got 100 miles to go yet. You can see there. Well, 98. You can see it in reflection. Oh, pulled into the shade. Only what I like to do is do a bit of uh, driving up to somewhere, driving out. The trouble is when you're on the auto route. It's a bit difficult to then to turn back round to pick the camera up to, you know what I mean? Because you're then facing into oncoming traffic. So I'll be doing that kind of stuff hopefully in Denmark and uh, Norway. So a little trick, what I do, especially when you're getting tired and you start getting an ATK arse, is um, break it down into, if you start looking at kilometres it seems a long way. So every 50 miles now, I'll stop again. 50 miles from the 100 miles. I stop, stop 50 miles prior. I stop now 50 miles at 100 miles, and I'll stop again 50 miles to go. 10 minutes, bit of a stretch, hydrate with water. That's it, and off you go again. Another 50 miles. We try and do the whole lot in one ear. You ain't gonna do it, especially on a warm day as well. Right, I've seen another 50 miles. The daft things you do, eh? That little teddy. <laughs> if I'm secretly putting uh, my top box, he's now hitched a ride on the front. Got him in two days, I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs>
arrived at the destination in Budelsdorf in Germany, northern Germany, not far from the border of Denmark now, but uh, 360 mile. Not a bad little trip today, but again, a bit hot and warm. When I booked it, he did say they had secure parking. I am parked on the front, I never quite like that, but hey, it is what it is. It's got a lock on, it's got like a kind of um, metal sort of fence there, for like a bike secure, so. I have changed it. He said we had a load of Harleys in the other, the other night, so missed them. no problem. It's not like being back home in sunny Manchester. So this is my hotel and I'm on the other side with a garden. I'm just going to have a walk into town and uh, some to eat because I am starving. Not eating since what? 6.30, 7 o'clock this morning properly. Only a little snack at lunch, but yeah, hungry now. Just had a really nice breakfast, so we're on the third day now of our tra of the travels, and uh, today is the exciting one. Off to Denmark, never been before, so uncharted territory. So today is a ride of about 250 miles, right up to the top of Denmark to Hurt Shells. Can't wait. Water, refreshment, a quick stop. Nice little stops these in Denmark. A lot better than, uh, well Germany's good. And certainly better than the UK. What I have noticed, felt so let me take my helmet off. Oh, shit today. Uh, it's about, what? 18 degrees so perfect yesterday was really warm so you start getting your body starts getting hot and sweaty and uh, my arse does and then it starts to ache more but having a more of a comfortable ride so the mileage doesn't seem so so bad at the minute it's pretty good so I'm gonna get hydrated 
on uh, a nicked a banana out of the breakfast buffet. Can't wait to get to Norway yesterday, uh, yesterday, tomorrow, where you're going to get to see the scenery and it's going to be epic, I think. Really, Denmark, yeah, lovely country, quite flat. I am sticking to that. I'm quite conscious at the minute of my filming. It's kind of it's all auto route and kind of main routes, but I think nearer to where I'm going, I kind of pull off onto like. You see a little bit of Denmark, but auto routes in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Germany, Denmark, are all pretty much the same. But all the really decent stuff is is yet to come. Get much better than this, folks. Another little cabin. Let me show you inside. You've got your bed, got your bed in. You do have to pay a little bit extra for bedding and towel, but you, you have to put it on. It's just fold down there. That's my that's my towel I just used. So a little table area. Uh, it's got a fridge and when in Denmark it's got to be in it so fridge uh, hob top what's in here a washing up bowl pots and pans cutlery yeah, everything that you need really. A little kitchenette, kitchenette, kitchenette area, storage area, kettle, coffee making machine, but there's no coffee obviously. I've got my own. So mega mega 
impressed. I'll take you around for uh, a walk around in a minute, the other amenities. Yeah, they just shower everything. Showering toilets down there, but dead easy. Well, there, there's the coast. We'll have a look at the sea in a minute. If Carlsberg did camping cabins, then this would definitely be it. What a cracking place. Fairly easy ride today. No dramas, apart from um, pulled off the main highway and uh, pulled off the main highway and I, I went to get some fuel and then I thought you could just go and pay like, like normally but no no it's like a special thing you have to put your card in your details anyway a van driver pulled up I had reverse lights on and was watching me it was fairly busy so of course I'm trying to mess around got to unhook the tank pad put fuel in and all the rest of it and he was getting impatient and so I was rushing a little bit forgot to disconnect all everything electric that's connected to the bike so of course went to start it did you oh, sugar anyway it, it had a bit of a brain fart and then did fire back up again so the intention before I got to hurt shells was stop off go and have a look at a bit of a town or something like that but I thought I'd best just get here anyway the, the bike's been fine since but uh, I wish I'd kind of got a new battery before I set off because that now is on the back of my mind now for traveling you know every time you press that you stop and press so I've got to make sure that everything is unplugged uh, as soon as I turn that ignition on even setting the sat nav you, you can't set the sat nav uh, while the ignition's not on so, so nothing on because I think it will start to discharge and I don't want that. I have got my battery that Noiko uh, battery booster like a quick start thing it'll start a three litre diesel car and it's fine for the bike so anyway enough yabbing I'm going to enjoy the experience here I'm going to have a bit of a walk around I'll show you some of the amenities first and then I think we'll go and have a there's a lighthouse up there I'm going to have a look at that along the beach and then I think I'll walk over to the town and uh grab a meal it's got to be fish for the next few days folks i think uh definitely uh feeling something fish supper tonight i think definitely right cheers i'll see you in a bit quick walk around at the entrance camp shop reception nice people Too much, but the usual stuff toilets, barbecue point, washing up facilities, and a TV room. Just at the other end of the campsite now, and uh, you can tell it's a bit breezy. We'll have a walk up there, I think. Check out this lighthouse. Few more steps. We're suddenly getting me steps in today. There's the light. You see it? Oh, you see it there? Focus in. Oh my god. Little door.
I'm here, herd shell. I'm going across the water tomorrow. Christian Sand. What an amazing place. Loads of history. World War II bunkers. This is one here. Norway, safe from the map I just showed you before. I'm sure it would be. Would you mean a soldier? Must have lived in here, mustn't they? I bet they did. It was cold in the winter. I'm sat on a sofa, overlooking the sea, in the sunshine, thinking two ball classic. Don't get much better, do they? Oh, just got back from uh, the town centre and uh, say, had a nice bit of a walk around by the by the sea. Got some fresh air, proper windswept now my face. And I tell you what, sea air does you good. The air quality seems fantastic around here, it really does. I, I can't wait then to get to Norway as well where I'm going up, further up. What it's going to be like there, wow. Uh, so, I said earlier that um, I fan fancied uh, fish, obviously by the sea. That did not happen, slightly disappointed. Uh, I saw on uh, TripAdvisor for the area, like a really sort of takeaway in there, sort of restaurant fish place so I thought oh, fish and chips has got to be a something like that just just fancy something like that fish or fresh fresh fish food didn't happen because it had closed you were closing they were open but they were, they were closing ice cream only gutted so I'm returning back here on the Thursday anyway so we return because it's so good here then why not have another night on the way back down? It makes sense really, it really does. So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, so I hope we enjoyed the video up to now. Uh, I've enjoyed making it. And what I'm gonna do is gonna be part two. Tomorrow going to Norway, getting on the boat, Norway is gonna be the second video. I don't know whether there'll be a third, I don't know, see what how much I film. So but I hope you've enjoyed it so far and I hope you like it, share it, subscribe it, do the usual thing. And uh, I'm glad you've come along with me for the ride. And going back to my previous video that I did, again once again, thank you everybody for all the wonderful comments you sent me and advice and tips. One of them I did ignore when um, some guy said um, make sure you you don't navigate around Hamburg. Well, I got stuck in traffic yesterday. It was a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, you live and learn. Uh, so, have a great evening or day or whatever time you're watching this video. And um, I shall see you for part two, which is...
probably on the boat over over the sea to Norway. So part two that will be coming up. So have a look out for that. All the best guys. See you very soon on the next one.